And <clears throat> I, I guess all of this really comes about from the fact that when you do surgeries, fa failures are inevitable. And when failures happen, impact is significant. And these are some of our own uh, revisions that we have done uh, over the last uh, 30 years. Um, many, many years ago, Tom Faring uh, reported the, this in 2001, reviewing uh, 440 revisions, uh, divided this into early and late. And um, within five years, the incidence was 64% of the causes were infection and stability. And that time, cementless fixation was, was very, very, very common. First eight years of my uh, practice, I did cementless knees. Happy to say we had a 96% survivorship at uh, nine years with those knees. Uh, this is one of Peter Sharkey's uh, landmark papers, John Insall Award. Uh, the overall common revision, uh, re causes of revision in 2002 in patients in the early group, which was less than two years, was infection, aseptic loosening. And mainly at that point, this was attributed to poor surgical technique. He then went on to classify the late group, which is greater than two years, again with uh, incidence of aseptic loosening, malrotation, and polyethylene wear, which accounted for 70% of all late revisions. He then revisited this subject in 2014, and there was a, a sort of a tectonic shift that the most common causes of failures were very different. They were loosening, they were infection, which continued. There was instability, there was periprosthetic fractures, arthrofibrosis. In most uh, series, if you re review literature, infection is the commonest cause of early revision and aseptic was the commonest cause for late revision. And this is exactly what is reported in the Swedish registry as well. In 2007 and uh, initially in five, Phil Noble from, uh, from Texas uh, came up with this concept where he said that significant improvements have happened to the procedure and prosthetic designs. But in spite of it, because of the younger population undergoing surgery, there's an increasing incidence of patients who are dissatisfied. And it was really Phil Noble who actually came up with this concept of what we call, uh, we report in virtually any knee conference, 20% of patients are dissatisfied. And there were various causes. Uh, there was the aseptic loosening, and uh, this was uh, there were various reasons for this. There was instability, which was not really recognized. Uh, today, instability is a chapter in its own right, and you can spend a whole day discussing instability. You can have tibiofemoral instability. You can have sagittal plane, coronal plane, rotatory plane. Uh, you can have mid-flexion instability, hyperextension instability. Uh, it happens when severe deformities are corrected, when the collateral ligaments are compromised either by iatrogenic uh, ruptures or because of extensive releases. I think it's important to understand that this, this, this whole meeting is all about principles. And I think it's important to understand that when you are uh, in an unstable situation, just increasing the constraint is not going to get you out of trouble. Because even with constrained implant, this is a patient who was referred to me. It had four revisions. You can see that this patient also had a um, interosseous approach to remove a previously uh, fully uh, cemented stem. But the challenge here was that the uh, soft tissue balancing was not uh, adequately achieved and this LCCK dislocated. So malalignment was something that we are recognizing increasingly and in instability. And malalignment in by itself leads to aseptic loosening, polyethylene wear, osteolysis, and maltracking. Uh, and when you have malrotation, it leads to petal instabilities. And the commonest reason for petal instability that we see are patients who've had petal dislocations go through an arthroscopic type procedure where we realign uh, the medial MPFL, and these fail. CT scans are particularly helpful. Whenever you see maltracking, look for malrotation. And the answer to that is a revision of the surgery to correct the malrotation, not realigning the petlar tendon. Which brings us to the topic that we have been discussing since the morning. Robotics is the newest kid on the block. Uh, so I, I've been a part of uh, most development uh, procedures right from the gender knee, the MIS quad sparing techniques, all the way through the, uh, the various iterations of development. 
most of them have fallen by the by the wayside and i i do believe that this is a stage in evolution and i'm pretty convinced in my own mind that uh, robotics is here to stay we use robotics in a select few uh, patients in our in our practice and interestingly it has uh, increased exponentially in um, in all parts of the world it started off in the us and then like everywhere else it sort of caught on with wildfire that the two take home messages for me um, which i'd like to share is in my mind the place of robotics in today's day and age are twofold one is uni compartment and the second is aligning the establishment uh, its role in totally replacements continues to be debatable you had some very elegant uh, demonstrations in the hands of people who are very very well uh, acquainted with this technique and are masters of the game um, but we really need to sort of wait to see whether this will stand the test of time you need uh, to understand that this involves efficiency cost uh, enhanced precision and basic understanding of the uh, software and what the screens tell you so like i said uk and we had this d- debate and discussion in the morning is alignment is critical aseptic failure is the commonest cause malalignment malpositioning and there's no doubt robotic uh, options give you a far better option for both for brain uh, bone preparation and soft tissue balancing in the several articles as you go down from 2006 uh, 2010 uh, alan hansen from mayo found significantly improved uh, femoral component position which brings me to the moot point we are all talking about better alignment we are talking about better positioning can somebody in the audience tell me that as improved alignment necessarily mean better outcomes and that's the question that we need to ask ourselves again i think uh, anu may mentioned this very, very elegantly in in his uh, in his uh, talk uh, the incidence of uh, inserts the low volume inserts like 9 10 11 11 have increased ever since robotics came into its own the the other arguments that the pain is less forgotten joint score was double that of the conventional group again is open to debate for every one article that alludes to this fact there are articles that <clears throat> say that quite the contrary but we we'll let we'll rest with that that it's a good technique it's reproducible and it brings a uh, sort of sense to the whole um, procedure this is our own experience and a lot of these are without uh, robotics uh, we've had a 13 year uh, Uh, experience with uh, with with uh, fixed bearing cemented robot um, uni compartments we've done about 1100 cases and our survivorship is 90.4% at 13 years it's reasonable it's kind of uh, matches up with what's re- re- reported in literature and these are all cemented uks um again in the coronal plane does it matter uh, yes it does malalignment of any dimension um, d- does matter uh what is not acceptable is what degree of malalignment at what point till what point is it acceptable and at what point does it go over the threshold yesterday at dinner i showed somebody a tibia that was um, actually implanted with almost 37 degrees of varus and he came to to us for a for the contralateral knee and we looked at it and he said we thought that was the one that was troubling him and we said oh this needs to be revised He said, "No, no, I'm extremely happy with that. I'm delighted. I can do everything I want with this. It's the other knee that's working. So, be happy to share that with any of you who are interested. But the point I'm making here is, positioning does not equate with satisfaction. So, somewhere we need to be rational about this. And Seth Parrott's article in JBGS is a landmark article." um so how accurate is robotics and i i think you've seen today it is accurate it is reproducible as long as you understand the screen you understand what you're doing with it and uh, what whatever your ethos or your philosophies i think it it will do well we don't have long term data on robotic totalities as we speak today we have 5 years 7 years we don't have 20 years we don't have 15 years um and if you look at bridgeter again going down the down the line at uh, from yang's article in 2017 results are comparable for the more critically uh, acclaimed people in this audience 
uh, the um, January edition of KSSTA is whole art, the entire journal is devoted to robotics. And I would uh, suggest that those of you who are interested should go over it. It is a very uh, non-biased article. There are meta-analysis, uh, there are outcome studies. And by and large, if you read that, it gives you the impression that yes, it's reproducible, but realistically speaking, there is not a great deal of difference in the long term, whatever long term means in terms of the context. So we have all of these downsides to robotics, the cost we, and Anup uh, very elegantly alluded to that, the exposure with CTs and so on, pin tract infections, neurovascular injuries, and these have all happened, uh, injuries to the patellar tendon and so on. So you have a learning curve. Uh, typically, it takes about six to 10 cases before you get reasonably comfortable with it. Uh, soft tissue injuries, um, again, the, it's called the MASTIC classification, microscopic soft tissue injury score. And uh, these are obviously negated and uh, it is reduced in the robotic uh, type of an option. There was a recent symposium in robotics in the Arcus and uh, in 2018, I, I was actually present there. Um, and uh, Brian Parsley um, was one of the speakers. And uh, the general consensus was what I just said, that it is here to stay. It's not going to go. It may not be in this iteration, but it will be there in some form or the other. So robotics is the future. The answer to the question is yes. But I suspect it's going to be in combination with far more intelligent options like artificial intelligence and augmented reality. Again, when you look at uh, review of literature, subtle improvements, high survivorship at short-term follow-up, functional outcomes comparable to conventional needs. Um, and the telling comment, this was an a editorial in Joe by, by two of the people who I respect a lot and you'll hear, hear him speak tomorrow, Bob Booth, who's a very dear friend and a, a fabulous uh, surgeon with almost 45 years of experience. The current survivorship of TK, it's 98% at 10 years, 95 at 20 years. Will robotics improve that? That's the question that you, all of you have to answer. The promise is to reduce outliers, but is alignment and decision-making paramount and will that improve outcomes? So I would sum up by saying that based on current and emerging data, it's unreasonable to resume Assume that robotics is necessary for both UK and TK. Impact on UK is greater. So across the board, everybody re reports that. This is an article in 2021. No difference in gate parameters. Another article in 2023. Any technology assisted TK will fail without the correct 3D alignment and balancing target. Another article from 2023, this is just a few months ago, complications of robotics. All I'm trying to say is this is a great tool. It's a great technology. But do not believe that this is the only technology. If you do not know the basics of doing a knee replacement, no robot is going to get you out of trouble. With that word of caution, gentlemen, I'd like to thank you all for your attention. And sorry, just before I wind up, I, I didn't realize I had this. This is a patient, one of my earliest patients. I did this patient in uh, 1990. This is uh, one of my earliest cases. This is a Freeman Samuelson knee. This is uncemented. This is an all poly uncemented tibia. This patient has 150 degrees of knee flexion. She squats using the Indian toilet. She weighs 115 kilograms. And these x-rays are from about six months ago. All I'm saying is the best robot is right there. Thank you.